All right, we are going to call the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order on uh, January 15th, 7 p.m. Limited uh, agenda here today. Um, and the first thing on it is approving the meeting minutes from our last meeting of November 22nd. Any comments or questions about the minutes? Katie did a good job. Fantastic. Uh, motion, does anyone want to make a motion to approve them? I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes as drafted. Second. Dave, you ready? I'm ready. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Moving right along, the next thing we have here is a, it says interview, it's really just more of a chat with Doris Cahill, who has been appointed by the uh, Board of Selectmen as our first alternate. Fantastic. Um, Doris, if you want to sit up at one of the things so you can use a microphone. Okay. As you'll as you'll learn, using a microphone is very important as we're on TV over there. Okay. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it should be on. But um, folks, I, I had it's a chance on. to. Uh, yeah. yeah you're, you're okay. okay. Um, I had a chance to talk to Doris before the selectmen's meeting and um, had a nice conversation about her background and her, her work experience and the fact she's lived in town for 20 some odd years or so and yeah. just uh, where she can and will be a good asset for us. And so I will kind of defer since I've already done this, but feel free to ask her questions. And Doris, why don't you start and just tell us a little bit about your background and who you are and stuff and we'll just go from there okay so it's, it's safe to assume no one knows my background at all or okay is that a yes affirmative well Sorry. we did get actually your no form. we did get a whole we did uh, get the form okay, that you filled right. out get a whole write-up thing <laughs> all so. Right, so yeah so just kind of a starting point um so i i have from a professional perspective um i have a about a 33 year background and work career I'm a certified public accountant in both Massachusetts and Connecticut. Um, I have a long tenure in, in public accounting, about 10 years. Um, and then from there, I did entrepreneurial work at a company for about 15 years, which I sold about seven or eight years ago. And I predominantly worked professionally with architectural, engineering, as well as some of my family businesses, uh, my family business to this day, which is in Connecticut. I'm from Connecticut. Um, um, I have a family, I have two grown daughters, 30 and 27, went through the school system here. Um, I have been winding my career down since I sold my company. I was on a non-compete for a few years, uh, continued to consult predominantly in accounting, not just tax, but job cost accounting, um, working in some uh, pretty large, medium-sized and small mom and pop um, engineering and architectural firms, uh, predominantly in Boston, um, but nationally, uh, more Boston than nationally, and I would be very close to just about any kind of project. So I have a pretty good understanding of, um, you know, work tasks. I have a very good understanding of phasing and tasking and change order. Um, all the terms, I'm pretty familiar with looking at blueprints. I wouldn't say I'm an expert. Um, so I have a good com comfort level with that um, from a business perspective as well as a planning perspective. Um, then uh, after that, I um, volunteered. I just got back from US Peace Corps, which people like to hear about sometimes. I spent two years, uh, three months in the Republic of Georgia. Um, I was chosen to work in economic development with um, uh, predominantly agritourism and um, uh, businesses, uh, very small businesses. Um, advertising, and I have some accomplishments and a pretty in-depth record with the U.S. Peace Corps, kind of what I did overseas. Um, I have background in from U.S. Peace Corps, a grant writing, budget writing, um, to help kickstart um, initiatives, because um, it's a post-Soviet country with particular um, um, cultural differences in the United States. To, they want to become more democratic, and Peace Corps is independent from the U.S. Embassy and their efforts over there, but they, we often align and I worked on a USAID project, which most people are familiar with USAID. So I worked on a very large project activity with USAID. I worked with the economically 
with the poor. There we go. <laughs> I work with very, very, a lot of poor people. I work with women. Um, I work with youth. I develop skills. Um, came back. I'm bilingual. And I was never bilingual because I, <laughs> I came back bilingual because you have to speak a secondary language. So that was one of my accomplishments that I enjoyed the most. The most difficult, but I enjoyed learning a second language very late in life. Um, I volunteered in town extensively before I went to USP Peace Corps. Um, and um, I don't even know if that's on my uh, fill out application, but I've done a variety of very low level, just helping if someone need help, I'll go ahead and do it. Um, I don't know if you have questions for me. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm pretty easy to get on with and I've seen a lot. <laughs> I've yeah, seen I think, a lot in I life. think that's a good, a good introduction. Yeah. Um, and then I'll just let you folks ask some questions if you have any or. Connecticut, huh? Yes. So, are you a Yankees fan or a Red Sox fan? Yeah, so that's a really excellent question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I have a follow-up question to that, too. Right, right, right. So, I was on the border of uh, Danbury. Danbury, Connecticut is where I was born um, until I came to Boston after UConn. I went to University of Connecticut. Um, I'm just, this is terrible. I'm not a sports fan. All right, I'll let that slide okay, then. That's the follow-up was, are you a Giants or a Patriots fan? Yeah, but, no, yeah, but I have, I have a sister who's a sports buff, and... I know which way she aligns, but we still we still get along. So don't wear that up here. <laughs> and do you still speak to her? <laughs> oh yeah, I still okay. see, I still speak with my sister. Goodness gracious! <laughs> but she can she's really good at stats. Good. Yeah. So, and a golfer. <laughs> um, I, I do hi, hi and thank you for coming forward and being an alternate, which we we really do need and we really really appreciate. But we all have a lot of fun here, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that um, you've joined us as well. Yeah, fun. It's we have, easier. We do have fun. We do have fun. Oh, I was having a ton of fun a couple of years ago. I, <laughs> that was, that yeah. looked fun. Yeah. Barrel of laughs. I was like, I can't <laughs> wait to get on that board. He was excited, <laughs> he was excited <laughs> for those meetings. Yeah. Here's my question. So you, you, since, since you've, you, you've been um, back from the Peace Corps, you decided you wanted to join a board or committee. I did. I, yeah. I'm just wondering why ZBA, or did you? think about other other boards also, I, I did or? look at one other board yeah. um, and it, there was actually competition for position oh. um, and they were very qualified so I looked at um, uh, Aspet um, Valley had a um, an opening um, for youth advisement um, on, on the school committee yeah. not a school committee board mm -hmm. member but an advisor to it and I had interest in that because I'm always been interested in um, development development of youth or development of businesses um, and this specifically, because I, I feel pretty attached to some of the things I've gone through with my family over the years, um, developing, getting a non-conforming <clears throat> zone change. So I, you know, <laughs> I think I know what that feels like and, and what those spe specific issues are with non-conforming properties that can be 100 years old. Um, and I've worked with architects and engineers, so I thought I could suit it and I could read code. Um, I've read, <laughs> read some of the... Uh, the code here. Um, um, I read a lot of IRS code, and I'm, I think I'm an advocate. Yeah, you know, I'm an advocate. So to, to read it, to do do what's right and do what's right legal. So I think I could bring that asset. I'm pretty young still. I think I'm pretty young. I can, got a couple years left in me without flying. I, I'm a million mile flyer, <laughs> so I want to stay grounded. I'm trying to stay grounded. Great. Yeah. And yeah, that is one of the things that I I had noticed when I talked to Doris before is you know the the cross between a CPA and their level of needing to understand codes and rules and regulations and the zoning code and rules and regulations and kind of that cross of really understanding how important following and and you know using the the code to guide the decision I thought was a good uh, good match for her background. All right. And, and your your uh, your background as far as being connected to it is is as really a contractor for different firms, correct? You weren't necessarily aligned with one primarily. Was it a, just a host of different? Well, that's a really good question. Um, firms? So aligned with different firms? No, um, I would uh, consider the company I had I had about ten to fifteen employees of all fifteen years, and um, we were. Um, moving as consultants and teams of consultants. Sometimes there'd be five or 10 other people on the project work. And it was really for the client, um, mm. although they may be on a, a GovCon contract, uh, we were not contracted uh, 
by, by the government. You were contracted by the By the client. By the, con by the, the client, client yeah. would contract us um, to be able to typically um, solve a specific accounting matter or put integrated accounting systems or database issues mm -hmm. um, related to projects. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah. they can account back to the government, excuse me. So they can it's, account for the, to the government every stage of a contract. That's quite complicated um, kind right. of consulting work, very right. niche, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm just, I guess I'm just clarifying, like is there one in particular, or it sounds like it was broad-based. You provided services depending on what the level Yeah, it was very broad-based. I do have some uh, difficulty explaining that in my tenure having the company, we had about 800 projects that ran through that company. Uh, it would be 40 projects in a year. That's a lot of volume. Mm. And that was predominantly serving accounting, serving database, a computer technology work, uh, traveling through the country to resolve a whole host of um, accounting issues that would delay the functioning of the company. Um, you know, they would have a cash flow problem, and that could be a very systematic issue, not a personnel issue. So we'd be in for the systematic part of it. So d do you have much familiarity with, uh, you know, zoning hearings or, or not not necessarily um, I wouldn't say my day-to-day -day was zoning hearings hearings at all uh, my uh, experience with zoning hearings has specifically to do with uh, family business activities in the in the state of Connecticut uh, needing to know that and uh, engage architects and, and, and survey engineers and, and so, so we had family that might have been more I'm still in it my father passed nine years ago and um, we, I still run rental properties where I was born. Okay. Okay, so, um, th so that the interest I is in that, um, okay. you know, the interest in that, the interest in the town. Right, right. And I'm I hope I can years. serve well. Yes. I, yeah, no, that's a good question. They're all Thank good you. questions. No, I'm just, very briefly, I'm just so thankful you stepped forward to volunteer. <clears throat> um, we really appreciate you stepping forward. Um, it really, you can fog a mirror, and you're a woman. <laughs> okay, That's, yeah, definitely. Those are, those are two pluses. We need we terms. need alternates, and so uh, okay. I, I I say that tongue in cheek, but you're more than uh, qualified. I love your background from uh, an academic perspective. It's mm -hmm. always really important to me to read the bylaws, the statutes, and so that we have a familiarity and a fair working understanding of those regulations moving forward. And so in all sincerity, I'm really thankful you stepped forward and just, uh, we just need one more alternate. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Great, thanks again. Yeah, I thanks. do. Thanks, I really, I'm looking forward to it. This is a change, it's something I want to be more governmental. When I went to Peace Corps, I started to go in that direction, get away from private. I thought that better answered your question. Right. I mean, 30 years of private, you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen, <laughs> you see a lot, you know, you see a lot, it's, it's good. Um, but it, um, it's just a change, and, and that started with Peace Corps being more, um, more understanding how nonprofit NGO uh, mentality, the way they work within their units. And private is, private is really a day-to-day. -day, right. It's a day-to-day -day right. thing. Yeah, like Mike said, it, it is the, the background's impressive, and we certainly are appreciative yeah. to have oh, somebody. So here. definitely, I like to thank laugh. you. Yeah. I like to laugh, um, and I am a bit of a risk taker. Just a heads up. Okay. Okay. Works for us. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thanks yeah. so much. Um, so you've already been appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Have you been sworn in? Yes, the yeah. At the, at the meeting, I asked what else I needed to do. I met with Jim Haggerty. Yep. He Great. swore me in. Did he, he give you a book? Oh, yeah. He gave okay, me, good. He gave me the book. <laughs> and he did oh, a book. How come so Debbie's got here. a book? Oh, we all got books. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was a reason all for domains. the books, for you, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Got Jim books. Haggerty. Okay. Yeah. So in the past, um, as a board, we have. Uh, hey, Jim. That would be me. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. I must have missed. So uh, off camera, that was Jim Haggerty, town clerk, uh, alerting us that two of our members had not picked up their code of the town of Southboro books and he is going to bring them for us. That's great. Um, so in the past it's just been typically the the five main members or whoever is sitting up here at the table and I think Mike brought up the idea that the alternates should be up here too. Um, I think during hearings you are going to be involved in hearing it and listening to it and asking questions. It's just when it comes time to vote unless you're 
officially sitting because one of us is absent or one of us has a conflict or something along those lines, you just don't get a vote. But you're, you're up here and, and seeing all the things we do and are able to ask questions the same as we are. Uh, that's going to work well considering I don't have the experience and there's going to be a chance where likely someone's going to be absent. So I get to participate and you just tell me. Nope, that's great. Um, so with that, have a seat. We have one last oh, thing on the agenda tonight. Come on up. You're sworn so, in. Or two. So, so the other, the other alternate. Uh, uh, we'll, we, we can all scooch down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll work. We'll, we'll make it work. Um, do we have? We'll have to touch the button under there. <laughs> copy of the zoning code that we can send down to her. That's a panic button uh, down there. Yeah, in I don't case know if she has it. Okay. Well, there's no one here. Um, yeah. So with that, we're going to move on yeah, to the next that, item. I, I, you sent that to me, right? Yeah. And I copied the code section because I need it out of the book and the, and the modification. Okay. All right. I think I'm good unless I'm missing something. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. That may be her. Or somebody. Yeah. So and yeah, I think we're good. However it works. Thanks, Katie. So... Um, <clears throat> Next on our agenda is uh, to discuss the proposed zoning bylaw change. Um, this is something that occurred as an offshoot of um, a, an application that got pulled at our last meeting for Newton Street, Newton Road, Newton Street, I think. Forget if it's street or whatever. Um, but there was some conflict in our existing code from one section to the next as to what you could and couldn't do without having to get a new special permit or variance. Um, the language that's being changed in here is to make that clearer. Um, the intent of it is to give more rights to the homeowners um, in their ability to um, reconstruct uh, structures associated with their house that might be non-conforming, um, existing non-conforming um, from times before we had zoning or that zoning has changed. So um, the process from what I understand is that officially we as a board um, are putting the change request forward for town meeting. Um, but the planning board is required to host all the meetings and, and go through the process of vetting it and airing it with the, with the town. Um, not sure why we got picked to be the ones officially presenting it, but we are. <laughs> um, so with that being said, we have uh, two coffees, one as it is now, one that is lined. It's not redlined because there's no color copying. Um, oh, that's right, Jim. Oh, thank you, Jim. Thanks. So, we can go through and, and look at where the, the changes have occurred. Um, what you'll see is that most of them re Evolve around reconstruction or other structure, otherwise structural change, um, and really what that is, uh, the Newton Street one affected a deck and a roof. Um, the roof needed to be replaced due to rot and not needing, not being able to uh, maintain as well as the deck. Um, and uh, consequently, it needed to be adapted for better rainflow and things of that nature. So it was, it was that combination of it being reconstructed and also changed for structural and, and better building purposes that made it confusing. So you'll see that that language has been added because it wasn't there before. Um, so, and it gets added in the, in the various areas and what you can and can't do. And, and it's really kind of the same same change being being brought forward. So it's really just a clarification is the way I'm reading it. It is a clarification. It also, um, 
I believe this can, this uh, follows state building code better as well. But it, it also, uh, what's the, in, the, in the first paragraph, the line, no special permits under the subsection shall be granted for non-conforming signs subject to chapter 93 or 93D of the general laws is crossed out entirely. So there is a little bit more. Yes. Um, Pardon? Do you want me to take that one? I oh, just... you worked with, Sarah. fantastic. So I worked with um, Sarah on planning on that part. Um, we kind of collaborated a little bit for language. And those sections of the law have nothing to do with zoning anymore. So it was, it's just not relevant. So it was just no longer relevant. Okay, thank you. It also appears it's making it very clear in 174.19 by saying in anything not listed in the subsections, they don't, they didn't necessarily refer specifically to it before. So it does, that just seems like a, well, there's a, there is four now, there used to just be three. But it's still, it's not, it's not really substantial, any of it. It's, it's all. It's, it's a clarifying. Clarification. Yeah. Does a lawyer agree? I do. I I I had reviewed this. Um, to me, the the I see the basis as to why it's really kind of it's. So I'm I was really more mindful of the third um, the third alteration, uh, 174 section 19, and speaking to Craig's point with respect to the roof lines. You know, basically, a homeowner was really restricted in being able to do what most of us would consider to be a needed repair to a pre-existing non-conforming structure. Right. And uh, as long as it doesn't increase the um, density or increase the non-conformity, is a better way to say it. Then, then I think that the I, I think. This will, this works for the framework that we need. Right. Yeah. It works better. Right. Let's put it right. that way. Yeah. I think it it, it it does seem to be just attempting to make extension, it a lot clearer. reconstruction, or structural change to a structure which complies with current setbacks, lot coverage, building heights, but is located on a lot with insufficient area. But the alteration will also comply with certain requirements. You know it. It just speaks, it adds a little bit more descriptive language for us as a board to be able to say, no, this is good. Right. Well, and quite honestly, it adds, it adds it for the building, building, department. building department to be able to say, so it doesn't we can just, get to us. so that it doesn't yeah. have to get That's to exactly us. That's exactly right. That's the point. Yeah. Anybody else have uh, comments or questions? I, I, I was say a minor point, but uh, is the uh, is the use of structure in 1749E correct, or should that be in fact structural? Um, Since it's modifying change, I it's actually I think it was probably my mis misstate of structural change because you see further in that sentence about non-conforming uses, structures, and lots. So right. a structure change, although not in, not impacting the non-conformity, um, I think that's kind of the, the example of the roof, that no. that structure had. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 to me, otherwise structure change sounds Which like section it should are you reading structural. From? The very first paragraph, the very first, oh, 174, God. Okay. 9. I was like, where is he reading from? E. Yeah. Should what line are you on? Uh, the, the second, the second, the second, the second, the second period, the second reconstruction second. or otherwise reconstruction or otherwise structure change. I'm just questioning if that should be structural. All special permits may be issued for the extension, alteration, reconstruction, or otherwise structure. I, I see both, but 
but I, and, and I see further in the same paragraph, otherwise structural change. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think it might make sense to have it consistent. Okay. Can we move? All right. I, I have a, one question. What if the use of the structure changes? Do you recall we had a a, a garage or something that was to be made a, into a, a living carport. space? Oh, Car, oh, a carport, carport made into a garage. Yeah, I remember right. that. Right. Does, does this alleviate that? Um, does this address <clears throat> that? In any way? That's a good question. Um, I'm trying to remember the case. It was the gentleman, he had a garage. But it, he had a carport. It was a carport. Well, he wasn't making it a living area, though. No, he was, it was making it storage. an enclosed garage. He was, was keeping the exact same so upper dimensions. So, to just me, putting up walls. Okay. Is he adding to the nonconformity, though, at that point? Um, yeah, I think if you change the roof line, so, like, let's say if you had a flat roof, and then you went. I don't think he was changing the roof line. I don't think he was changing no, the roof line. No, I'm just saying hypothetically. Yeah. Right, right. So okay. if you had a flat roof, and instead now you're on a pre existing non conforming lot, and now you're adding like a dormer, or, you know, let's just say you wanted to add a substantial amount of space where the roof overhangs. Yeah, then your overhang would go out further than the flat roof Correct. would, and that would be, an, that would be a further. A, a, a more egregious impact, impact. on the nonconformity. Yeah, it would increase the nonconformity. Before you didn't have the half story. That's above, correct. Then you're changing it, and then you're putting a half story, and have storage up there. Well, that that is a significant. I would a think so. Change then. You're not just yeah. going from a carport with a roof. You're going oh. to a to a half story that is now usable and create an extra square footage of living space. Right. So I mean, and there's other factors. It's, it'd be hard to say. I mean, if you put a roof on it, does that change your average height? Where maybe that creates an issue in the conform you know. No, that's where I wanted to make sure it's like oh it's changing the overhang or Right, but if you height. pitch it instead of flat, you know, maybe you were expecting that flat roof to help with your average height mm. that require that didn't require a height variance. Yeah. So yeah. you know no, it, it'll depend. I think it will. Yeah. We'll know when one comes in front of us. Right. We will. <laughs> I think it is addressed though. I was against this the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Get the tapes. <laughs> <laughs> but do you believe that structure and structural mean the same thing? Or do you agree that no, I, um, they mean two different things? I, I think they do mean two different things. I think I was just saying I used the word structural when I first said it, yeah. even though it said structure. Uh, yeah, so, so. Yeah, for consistency, or maybe you need that both. No, I think for no, I consistency think, uh, it should be it, well, structural. No, both yeah. meaning both. Um, Meaning both structure and structural. I think a, a structure change a is covered in alteration. Absolutely. So I think it should be structural, and we've, we've noted that. Yep. Do we vote on this? Uh, we need to vote as to whether or not we support it. Make a motion to support the... Spe um, Amendment to the zoning bylaws as drafted with the change to the structural provision. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, Doris. <laughs> okay. Um, so that is that. Um, the only other thing on here is the next meeting being February 12th. Everybody. Uh, Check the calendar, make sure you are available. We moved it up a week because of uh, school break. I, I'm not available. I, I booked for Wednesdays. Pardon? I, I'm in Florida. Oh, that week? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, so. I thought you said you booked Wednesdays. I'm like, okay, no, well, so that's going to be a problem. No, 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 I opened my Wednesdays and for the third week of the month. Okay. So I didn't know it was a shift, but. Yep. Um, occasionally we will have to shift. Uh, and just so you're aware, if a 
larger project comes in, kind of as we saw with Park Central, it could involve multiple meetings in a month. In general, we try to keep it to just one. So if it's normal, kind of business as usual for us. Do we, um, do we currently have anything significant on the agenda that evening? I was just about to ask Katie what we had going on for February. Yeah, we, we do have one hearing schedule. It's pretty straightforward. Um, St. Mark's bought a property on Main Street that was a two family, but hasn't been used that way in over two years. So according to the town code, they need to come for a special permit to move it back into its multifamily. And that's it. Okay. okay. So Wednesday, February 12th, 7 p.m. Wednesday the 12th, 7 p.m. We have one thing on the agenda and then approve minutes. And Do we know when the uh, planning board is having the hearing for the? Yeah, so the hearing is um, January 27th here. I think it's 7 o'clock. It might be earlier. I'm not 100% sure, but this has already been posted as needed to have the ho hold the public hearing, so whoever wants to come should probably go. Craig and I will be there. Are we? <laughs> Monday. Monday night. In case you didn't know, Craig. Yeah. I, I do have I it think, in an email. I know. I, I'm sure I said it. <laughs> um, cool. I did not book anything else yet. Um, you said the 27th, Kate? 27th. At, at 7? I think so. So that is one of the things that um, we can all go. We're not there as a board. We're not planning on voting on anything. It will not violate open meeting laws because it's a public hearing for something in our town and we're all entitled attending to be there. As, uh, as citizens. In, in attending as citizens, I will attend as the zoning board chair, but no one else is there and we won't have any meeting or anything to discuss it. So. Okay, so January 27th, that'll be exciting. Um, and then February 12th, um, which we have one thing, so it'll be a relatively quick meeting again, which we like. My turn now? I think it's your turn. Yes. Oh. We're all looking. I'm good at this, by the way. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to end the meeting and adjourn. Second. All in favor. Excellent, we are adjourned, thank you. All right. Very well uh, thank you. I practice.